Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on Java native interface and look at the third chapter of Oracle's documentation on Java native interface, which discusses the GNI types and data structures. This chapter discusses how the GNI maps Java types to native C types, and we've mentioned throughout my lectures that all the primitive types easily map to C++ types, so there is really no type conversion. Objects uh, don't map, so we get a just uh, object handler in C++, and then we have to use some sort of uh, API, which is very similar to Reflection API, to use those object handles to get uh, the properties of the objects. Field and method ID, these are offsets that correspond to the field and method IDs in the class file of the object, right? Each object has a header, a pointer in the memory inside JVM, and field and method IDs are just the offsets from that header pointer. And then uh, type signatures and uh, strings that uh, it uses modified UTF-8 strings, two byte strings, which is a JCAR and jcar is just a two byte unsigned integer so it's unsigned short jcar maps to unsigned shorts primitive types let me also bring up the primitive uh, uh, types primitive okay primitive okay primitive types okay geni primitive types and uh, the following table describes uh, Java primitive types and their machine dependent native equivalents. And again, JNI has a general JNI.h header file and a JNI underscore MD, which is machine dependent. And those are typically used for JINT and JLang to make sure that uh, JINT is always 32 bit on different platforms. JLang is also 64 bit, all right? So Boolean, JBoolean, unsigned eight uh, bits, byte java type j byte signed 8 bits right and um, char is uh, j char maps to j char which is unsigned 16 bits short maps to j short which is uh, signed 16 bits 2 bytes int maps to j int signed 32 bits line j line signed 64 bit flow j flow 32 bit double j double 64 bit void void not applicable so the description uh, void is just uh, void, right? And again, all of these J boolean, J by, J cat, J short, J in, J line, J flow, J double. These are all type defs of primitive types, signed or unsigned. So Java types, uh, primitive types directly map to uh, C++ types. So we don't pay any price for type conversion. There is no type conversion. There is a direct mapping. The following definition is provided for convenience. Define JNI false zero. So these are the macros in JNI.h. JNI false zero, JNI true one. And again, these are for uh, J booleans, for example. J size integer type is used to describe cardinal indices and sizes. And J size is just J int. And J int is int, which is a signed integer. And I don't know if this is a good uh, thing that they did. Uh, uh, maybe a size T type in C++, maybe uh, for whatever reason they didn't choose to use size T, they're just using uh, JINT, which is a signed integer for the cardinal indices, indices and sizes. In modern C++, we use size T, which is uh, usually an unsigned long integer. All right, reference types. The JNI includes a number of uh, reference types that correspond to different kinds of Java objects. JNI reference types are organized in the following hierarchy. J object, right? And J class is derived from J object, Java lang class object, so Java lang class. So J class corresponds to class object. J string corresponds to a string, Java lang string, and J string, again, all are J class, J string, and J array, these are subtypes of j object j array arrays j object array corresponds to an object array in java j boolean array j byte array char array short array int array long array for all the, and these all uh, correspond to primitive array types in uh, java j throwable corresponds to throwable uh, object in uh, 
in uh, basically in Java, right? Which we saw how we use it when we want to look at the, the get a handle to the exception object that actually is occurred. In C, all other JNI reference types are defined to be the same as J object. So in C++, uh, there is this type hierarchy. In C, C doesn't have type hierarchy. It doesn't have inheritance. So they did a type def of uh, J object for all other types. J class in C is just a type def of J object. In C++, JNI introduces a set of dummy classes to enforce the subtyping relationship. For example, J object and then J class inherits from J object, right? And uh, note that actual types are preceded with the underscore and then uh, the references that, that we get this J object is actually a pointer right remember references in Java are just pointers inside the JVM so J object is actually a J object pointer this uh, the actual type is underscore J object this J object is underscore J object pointer and the reason they did this because uh, if a Java programmer wants to use JNI, then if uh, this makes easier for them because a Java developer is familiar with references and not pointers, right? Remember, J object, J class, these are all pointer types. Field and method IDs. Method and field IDs are regular C pointer types. J field ID is a strike, for example, and then J field ID pointer underscore is the J field ID reference that we use. Again, J field ID, J method ID, everything here is reference, which means it's a pointer type. And pointers are cheap to copy. That's why uh, uh, Java uses references. The value type, J value union type, which is here. I also have it here. It's a union type is used as the element type in argument arrays, right? And we saw that we typically don't use this. Instead, we use a varorg uh, 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 basically method call, and we explicitly pass the parameters as a variable list instead of a J value. But we can also use a J value uh, basically union. And if you're not familiar with unions, a union is just the same memory which can be used for different types. So. And the size of a J union corresponds to the size of its maximum value. Remember, J boolean is primitive. J object is a pointer type, right? And uh, J double is a uh, eight bytes. J object, a pointer type on a 64-bit platform is, uh, is also 64-bit or eight bytes. So the size of J value is eight bytes because the size of the maximum size of its elements is eight bytes. The J value union type is used as the element type in argument arrays. It is described as below. So J boolean, J by, J char, J show, J in, J long, J float, J double, J object. Type signature. And we said that type signatures used for parameter signature. For example, when we have, we want to have a signature for overloaded native methods, we have to include the type signature, right? Or when we are getting the J class of a method or J method ID or J field ID, for example, the signature of the parameters is important. Whenever or wherever we need to specify the signature, we have to use these uh, uh, values, right? The JNI uses the Java VM's representation of type signatures. The following table shows these type signatures. Z is Boolean, B is byte, capital B, C is char, S is short, I is int, long, long is important, long is not capital L, it's capital J, this is the most important one that you have to remember, the reason it's not capital L, because L, capital L, and semicolon, is reserved for fully qualified class names, right, that's why for long we don't use capital L, the other reason is that capital L is already reserved in C and C++, and when we write capital L after a uh, an integer, it means it's a C or C++ line, right? But we use these types in a strings, so the fact that L is reserved for long integers in C++ doesn't matter because we use these types, uh, type signatures are strings, we always provide them as a string. But uh, I guess the main reason here that they chose capital J for long is because fully qualified object types are start with capital L. So F float D double L semicolon is for the fully qualified class name L starts with capital L and ends with semicolon. A square bracket and type uh, corresponds to the array types, right? And note that this type can be an object or a primitive. So a square bracket D is a 
دابل پریمیتیو اری اسکوئر برکت ال جاوا اسلش لنگ استرینگ سمی کالن از اری اف جاوا استرینگ فور اگزامپل سو اسکوئر برکت جاست سیگنیفایز ان اری اف ایتس وان دی اری وان اسکوئر برکت اف ایتس تو دی اری وی هاف تو اسکوئر برکت اف ایتس ثری دیمنشنال اری وی هاف ثری اسکوئر برکت سو وان اسکوئر برکت پر دیمنشنز رایت So archetype, archetypes, so parameter signatures in round brackets and return type is a method signature, the signature of a method, right? For example, the Java method long, this is the return type, the name of the method f, it takes an integer, a string, an int array, has the following signature. So the signature first in round brackets is the parameter signature, which is i, l semicolon, because a string is a Java object, And int array, it's a primitive array, so it's a square bracket i. So i for in uh, primitive int l Java slash length sem a string semicolon is a Java object, and a square bracket i is int array. And then the return type is long, so it's capital J. All right. And we said that we typically don't really need to memorize this because we can use Java P tool. First of all, Java H creates the header file which has the correct signatures, but we can also use Java P to look up the uh, uh, signature of uh, any method, any uh, method inside any class. So we use we typically use Java P hyphen S. to give us the internal type signature, which are exactly these signatures. And these signatures exactly map to the binaries inside the JVM. So inside the JVM, the a method signature is exactly this in ASCII format, in binary format, UTF-8, right? So uh, yeah, modified UTF-8 strings. The JNI uses modified UTF strings to represent various string types. Modified UTF strings are the same as those used by the Java VM. Right, so modified UTF-8 is not exactly UTF-16, but it's still two bytes. Modified UTF-8 strings are encoded so that character sequences that contain only non-null ASCII characters can be represented using only one byte per character. So non-null ASCII characters are so UTF-16 is backward compatible with ASCII, but then uh, even if you use ASCII characters, it is still two bytes for UTF-16. However, modified UTF-8 is more efficient in terms of storage and memory because ASCII characters are saved as one byte, but non-ASCII characters are still uh, promoted to UTF-16, which is two bytes, right? So ASCII characters one byte, uh, non-ASCII characters two bytes, uh, but uh, UTF if we just use UTF-16 instead of modified UTF-8, then Uh, basically, everything is two bytes, which is less efficient than modified UTF-8. So modified UTF strings are encoded so that character sequences that contain only non-null ASCII characters can be represented using only one byte per character. But all Unicode characters can be represented. All characters in the range of uh, Unicode 1 to 7F, so these are ASCII. Remember, ASCII is... seven bits not eight bits seven bits and the maximum ascii we can have is uh, seven which is one 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 seven bits or zero seven right seven is one 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 three bits and then f which one 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 so ascii goes from zero to one 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 seven ones so seven f is the maximum ascii that we can have So all characters in the range of uh, ASCII basically are represented by a single byte as follows. Zero, and then uh, one byte to uh, basically, uh, this is one byte, right? Two, four, six, seven bits. X here is a bit. The seven bits of data in the byte uh, give the value of the character represented, all right? So basically ASCII character is just seven bits. So uh, Uh, we can just use one byte to store them. The null character, which is zero, either in one byte, UTF-8, ASCII, or UTF-16, two bytes. The null character uh, and characters in the range of AT, which is outside ASCII, right? Seven, uh, seven F is the maximum ASCII. After that is eight zero zero, or after that it's eight zero, right? F becomes zero, seven becomes eight. From eight zero to seven FF, are represented by a pair of bytes x and y, x and y, so a pair of bytes, two bytes, right? 
the bytes represent the character with the value of this so we can use this uh, formula to get the, uh, the, the get the actual value now that we are shifting left six bits and then y 3f characters in the range of eight zero zero to fff maximum utf 16 are represented by three bytes right so uh, as you can see modified utf8 actually goes up to three bytes so it's good because it can save on the ascii by storing them as one byte and then non ascii up to 7ff it, it uses two bytes and after 7ff it uses three bytes the character with the value this is represented by the byte so we can use this formula to uh, get the byte characters with code points above fffff so-called supplementary characters are represented by separately encoding the two surrogate code units of their utf-16 representations each of the surrogate code units is represented by three bytes so above fffff we have to end up with six bytes right this means supplementary characters are represented by six bytes and there's this equation to uh, decode them the bytes of multiple characters are stored in the class file in big endian high byte first order so in class file which is a binary file of a java source of by a java class uh, the bytes of uh, multi byte characters are stored in class file in big endian remember big endian not little endian big endian high byte first these are two differences between this format and the standard UTF-8 format. Uh, first, the null character, character 0, is integer 0, is encoded using 2-byte format rather than 1-byte format. And if you recall, uh, when we talk about jcar, uh, we saw that, uh, uh, so how to convert const jcar pointer utf 16 2 bytes to const car pointer utf 8 ascii 1 byte right so we just can uh, uh, typecast it so and then uh, uh, we can use null character basically character backslash zero right both for comparing as a null character for const jcar pointer or as a const car pointer is encoded using the two byte format rather than the one byte format this means that modified utf8 strings never have embedded nulls second only the one byte two byte and three byte formats of a standard utf8 are used the java vm does not recognize the four byte format of a standard utf8 this is another thing that you might need to keep in mind it uses its own two times three byte uh, format instead like the six byte format for more information regarding the standard utf-8 format see section 3.9 unicode encoding formats of the unicode standard version 4.0 okay i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one